1979 was probably a more satisfying year for the entire Clemson family, coaches, players, and fans alike than the two previous seasons, although the Tigers went to bowl games all three years. With 15 1978 starters gone, there was still a lot of hope and plenty of enthusiasm for this young 1979 team. Fans responded in record numbers, and the players didn't disappoint them. When it was all over, some biggies had bitten the dust. What you're about to see is how a group of Clemson football players laid it on the line every Saturday afternoon. Furman opened the season before the largest opening day crowd ever. Paddled in quarterback David Henderson behind center. He's about to get sacked by All-American tackle Jim Stuckey for an 11-yard loss. And Stuckey to be congratulated by Steve Durham, who plays the other tackle. Cheerleader Mary Hill thought it was a good play, too. Now the Tigers on offense. Billy Lott at quarterback. The handoff coming to tailback Lester Brown, the senior tailback sweeping to his left, faking out Randy Sampson at the 40, and going 44 yards to score. It was Lester's longest run of the year. Anticipated Tiger fans going crazy. Furman's David Henderson again. Trying to get something started for the Paddleton offense, but middle guard Charlie Bauman breaking through, throwing Henderson for an eight-yard loss. That's what they came to see. Tigers back on offense again. Billy Lott has them in the eye, back to throw. Harry Tuttle is receiver at the 38. Tuttle eluding Bruce Fowler, cutting back at the 42 and outrunning the entire Furman team, an 81-yard scoring play. Clemson's longest offensive play of the year. <laughs> Tigers open the 79 season with a crowd-pleasing 21-0 victory. Get set to welcome Merrill. Terps came to the town next week. Clemson's first possession. Quarterback Billy Lott keeps. Billy coming to his left and traveling 35 yards before he's finally pulled down. Tiger fans realizing they like their quarterback. Now, Maryland on the offense, and quarterback John Tice fading to his right, looking to throw. But it's sophomore linebacker Jeff Davis breaking through and throwing the lanky signal caller for a five-yard loss. Tice still a quarterback. Back to throw again. This time about to be sacked for an 11-yard loss by linebacker Bubba Brown and middle guard Charlie Bonham. Altogether, Tice was sacked nine times that day. The Tigers at home for a third straight game. This one against the Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldog quarterback Buck Ballou launches a pass. But it's Anthony Rose stepping in front of the intended receiver, Lindsey Scott, to intercept at the goal line. Rose literally mobbed by his teammates. Now Tiger football at the 34. Fullback Tracy Perry pulls his way up the middle for a 33-yard gain behind the blocking of guards Chris Dolsey and Jeff Bostic and center Mark Thornton. And it's time for tailback Lester Brown. He goes off the right side for a three-yard touchdown run behind blocks of Mark Clifford and Jeff McCall. The rubber duck goes into his dance. That, my friends, is enough to...
to make any Tiger fan happy. Georgia quarterback now is Jeff Piper. And as he rolls right out of the end zone, Bob Goldberg forces him outside. Eddie Gathers comes up from his secondary position to tackle Pyburn in the end zone for a safety. And the Tigers lead it nine to nothing. And the Tigers on the offense. Billy Lott at quarterback. The handoff to Marvin Sims, the fullback. When Jeff Bostic moves his man six yards downfield, Sims lumbers through the hole and is finally brought down at the Georgia 13, a 37-yard gain. Buck Ballou now at quarterback for the Bulldogs, and he wants to pass. But watch Steve Durham blast through throw the Bulldog back for an eight-yard loss. That's Tiger D. And now Virginia comes in. It's homecoming for the Tiger fans. Billy Lott at quarterback. Back to throw. Finds Marvin Sims over the middle. Pass is complete. The gain good for 14 yards. It's a Clemson first down. Now Lester Brown gets into the act once again. Takes the handoff from Watt. Behind blocks of Jeff Bostick and Mark Clifford goes 15 yards to score, standing up. Little fact here, the Century Twins, Tony Vigorito and Greg Taylor, came into the game averaging over 100 yards apiece per game. But Vigorito stopped here by Charlie Bauman for no gain. That puts Vicky Roy in a happy mood. Billy Lott back at the controls. The pitch this time to Lester Brown, who comes left and cuts back to his right, faking out three Virginia players. And at the five, a head fake puts all ACC Tony Blunt on the ground, and Brown goes in from 17 out to score. The offensive line in the end zone to congratulate Brown after his big run. It's Cavalier quarterback Todd Kirtley running the show. Back to throw. Fires downfield, but Eddie Gethers picks it off. Brings it back 11 yards to put the Tigers back on the offense. Now Cavalier running back Greg Taylor tries to get a little fancy. But he doesn't fool tackle Jim Stuckey. And Stuckey throws Taylor for a three-yard loss. The Tigers' first road game of the year is at Virginia Tech. A cool, cool day. And Billy Lott crossing up the Gobbler defense with a third and two situation. He calls for the bomb to Perry Tuttle. Tuttle in the open. Beats Tony Blackman on the play and catches the 34-yard scoring pass. Another large following of Tiger Faithful in Blacksburg. Now Sidney Snell on the wing back reverse, but Jim Stuckey not fooled. That play results in a four-yard loss for the Goblins. In addition to cheering, the Tiger cheerleaders keeping warm on this cool day. Now the Lot to Tuttle combination works again. Lot goes left, finds Tuttle in the front corner of the end zone. The sophomore flanker leans out, but keeps his feet in bounds. It's an eight-yard score. The first play of the second quarter results in six points Tigers. Now the Hokies have the ball back. Quarterback Casey tries to go to the air. This pass deflected by Willie Underwood, intercepted by Jack Kane, and the Tigers back in business at the 49. Tiger Zach Mills says he couldn't have done better. 
The next game was at Duke, also on the road. Blue Devil quarterback Stanley Driscoll fading to pass. Just as he set the throw, linebacker Jeff Davis hits him, causing a wobbly pass. Picked off by all ACC cornerback Rex Barn, returned for five yards. Hey, there's a fan who found a new use for his Tiger Ray. Now the Tigers on offense. Billy Lott rolls on the option left. Pitches back to tailback Chuck McSwain. He gets a good block from tight end Mark Clifford. Outruns the Duke secondary and dives into the end zone. It's a 14-yard touchdown scamper. And McSwain, subbing for Lester Brown, gives his version of the shuffle. From the 28, Craig Browning now quarterbacking for the Blue Devils. Weist hard by Jeff Davis and Jim Stuckey. Gets his pass off, but the ball tipped by Andy Hedden. Intercepted near midfield by Hollis Hall. No return. The Tigers have another possession. Now get a look at fullback Marvin Sims. Bulldozing his way over the right side behind Jeff Bostick and Gary Brown. Rambles 22 yards to the Duke three before he's brought down. And now it's up to fullback Tracy Perry. He takes it in from a yard away, one of his two touchdowns on the day. The Tigers have a 21-3 halftime lead over Duke. The Tigers now return home. They'll go against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Wolfpack quarterback Scott Smith. Tries to get a little fancy. He doesn't fool middle guard Charlie Bauman, and Scott's thrown for a three-yard loss on the play. And now the Wolfpack threatening at the one with a second down. Quarterback Scott Smith takes the ball. Steve Durham knifes through, and Smith is thrown for a five-yard loss. For State to go for the field goal. Clemson back on offense now. Billy Lott rolls right. The next with his wide receiver, Jerry Gilliard, who beats Woodrow Wilson on a play that gains 26 yards. Lott once again at quarterback, rolls to his left, pitches to McSwain, who turns the corner, cuts back at the 12, cuts again at the 3, and goes in for the score from 18 yards away. Ryan Clark threw a key block for McSwain on that run. That set a crowd of over 61,000 on fire. Wake Forest bringing its high-powered offense to town. Jay Venuto, ACC Player of the Year, passes. The ball deflects off Bubba Brown's shoulder pads into the arms of Jeff Davis. Davis returns the interception 18 yards for a touchdown, and the Tigers have scored 10 points in just 16 seconds. Billy Lott on the keeper play here. Gets a good block from Jeff Bostick on the corner. Two more by Marvin Sims and Lee Nanny, and Lott's finally brought down, but not before Billy picks up 33 yards. Now at the 10, Billy Lott pivots, pitches to Chuck McSwain, who eludes Mark Lancaster, puts his head down, and bowls past Landon King at six more points for the Tigers. And this is heaven.
Jay Venuto still trying to bring the Deacons back. Throws long, but the ball is intercepted by Clemson's Terry Kennard. He returns it 31 yards to the Wake Forest 13, where Venuto has to make the tackle. Again, it's Tiger football. Lott back to throw. It's Perry Tuttle. In the corner where he has beaten Derek Crocker, a 10-yard scoring strike for the Tigers, and Clemson now leads it 24 to nothing. You can see the happiness expressed by the Clemson players. Jennifer Hemphill, a happy cheerleader. Wake Forest ball again. Venuto fades from the 31, but breaking through defensive end David Reed. Middle guard Chip Pruitt, and they throw Venuto for a nine-yard loss on the play. Venuto still wants to pass, however. But even before the Deacon signal caller can turn around, tackle Jim Stuckey's on his back. Another seven-yard loss. Credit it to the Tiger defense. And now Wake's ball in the closing minutes of the third period. Venuto fades, gets pressured, gets the ball off. But Eddie Gathers intercepts and starts a 43-yard broken field run back up field. Stuckey gives him a block at the 10. And Gathers finally run out of bounds at the 1. That'll set up the final Clemson score of the afternoon. That sends the crowd bananas. Now it's off to Chapel Hill and the final three on the road. Tar Heel quarterback Mac Kupek handing off to Doug Pascal on a sweep right. But tackle Steve Durham breaks through the interference and throws Pascal for a five-yard loss. Kupek fades the pass from his own 39, but he gets extreme pressure from Jeff Bryant. Ball intercepted by Bubba Brown, who brings it back up the right sideline, 47 yards before he's accidentally tripped by teammate Jeff Davis. Another good gathering of Tiger fans at Chapel Hill. Kupek to hand off to Pascal. He goes into the center of the line. He's hammered by N. David Reed. It forces a fumble recovered by Jeff Davis. Jack Kane and Bob Goldberg give their defensive teammate congratulations. That type of play always a good crowd pleaser. Obita Reary, who was to kick four field goals against the Heels, connects on this 44-yarder. The Tigers lead it 9-3. Cindy McDowell waved the pom-pom. Now watch this one. Clemson leads 12-10, threatening at the Tar Heel 3. Billy Lott fakes into the line to Lester Brown. And that entire North Carolina team taking the fake. Billy prants to the end zone. No Tar Heel was within 10 yards. Clemson took a 19-10 lead. That brings out the Tiger Paw flags. Now the Tar Heels on the march again. The Tiger defensive end Joe Glenn gets good penetration. P.J. Gay fumbles, picks it back up, throws across the field intended for Mac Kupek, but Hollis Hall goes high to intercept and close out a final Tar Heel scoring threat. That sends the fans back home happy. And now a Tiger first. A visit to South Bend to meet Notre Dame. In the second half, trailing 10 to nothing, Tiger punter David Sims kicks from his own 40 to Ty Dickerson, who fumbles the ball. Chuck Rose there to recover for the Tigers. Everyone else downfield to congratulate Chuck on his recovery. Tiger Band was at Notre Dame on this perfect football day. That fumbled punt set up this field goal by Ovid Ariri, who is true from 23 yards away as Bo Blanton holds, and the Tigers now trail in the game by a score of 10 to 3. Take a look at some of the 5,000 who followed the Tigers to South Bend. 
Now the Irish in their next possession. Quarterback Rusty Leash hands off the tailback Vegas Ferguson. Ferguson runs into Jim Stuckey, who forces a fumble, and Jeff Davis recovers it for the Tigers. Now that was worth coming up here for. Here's Billy Lott on a pivot. Starts with a sweep to the right. Chris Dolce knocks down John Hankard at the line, then gets cornerback Tom Gibbons five yards downfield. Mark Clifford makes the last block at the 10, and Lott in to score from 26 yards away. The Tigers lead at 13 to 10. Perry Tuttle and the rest of the offense all there to congratulate their teammate Billy Lott. That bunch is happy, too. And now Notre Dame driving at the Tiger 35. Rusty Lish attempts to hit Tony Hunter. With the pass tipped by Varn of the Tigers, intercepted by Terry Kennard. And Terry brings it back 22 yards to the Tiger 25-yard line. Hey, now this game's worth twice the price. Notre Dame gets a little fancy here as Lish pitches back to Vegas Ferguson, who then hands off to Pete Oulihan, and he throws one deep intended for Tony Hunter, but again, Kennard intercepts, and he brings it all the way back to the Notre Dame 19, where he's finally tackled by Oulihan, the man who threw the ball. That sewed up a big Tiger victory. It's going to be a short ride home for this bunch. Now on to South Carolina for the season's finale. Gamecocks with the ball, Gary Harper fakes to George Rogers, fades the pass, but is forced out of the pocket by Jim Stuckey, thrown for an eight-yard loss by freshman defensive end Ray Brown. And say nothing wrong with that. Now at the Tiger 45, Billy Lott. Passes complete to Mark Clifford, who makes a fine reaching catch. That play covers 16 before Clifford's knocked out of bounds in front of the Tiger bench. Several plays later, Obed O'Reary connects on his eighth consecutive field goal. This one from 35 yards away, and the Tigers lead it three to nothing. Fifteen thousand Tiger fans voice their approval. Now South Carolina at the 47. Gary Harper pitches to George Rogers. Rogers horse collared by sophomore linebacker Jeff Davis. No gain on the play. On the 31, Harper gives to running back Spencer Clark. Clark nailed for a yard loss by All-American Jim Stuckey. We're behind you, Tigers. With an 8-3 regular season record, Clemson gets an invitation to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta to meet Baylor of the Southwest Conference. Billy Lott and Bubba Brown represent the Tigers for the coin toss. And as the camera pans back, nothing but a sea of orange in Atlanta Stadium, some 35,000 Clemson fans there. A little pregame wrestling match between Zach Mills, dressed as the Tiger, and the real bear from Baylor. All Southwest Conference tailback Walter Abercrombie finds out early the Tiger defense is for real. Eddie Gethers made that big play. Now, Tiger ball at the Baylor 30. Billy Lott fades, passes over the middle to Lester Brown. Brown skips past Doak Field, goes all the way to the three before he's tripped up by Ken Griffin. Now in the power eye formation, Lott off to Lester Brown. He hurdles over Mark Thornton and Chris Dolce. The 32nd touchdown of Lester's career. That's a Clemson record. Makes even a cloudy day sunny. Baylor's ball now. Quarterback Mickey Elam starts to roll right before the play can develop. Tackle Jim Stuckey breaks through, nails Elam from behind. Mary Barnes and other cheerleaders rejoice. Late in the game, trading 24-10, only 30 seconds left. Andy Hedden comes in strong from the left side, blocks Ron Stowe's punt, tackled James Robinson, recovers for the Tigers at the Baylor one-yard line. And Clemson fans still have hope. Chuck McSwain plows in for the Tiger touchdown from the one, and the Tigers have narrowed the gap to 24-16. Now Clemson with a two-point play. Billy Lott rolls out, gets freshman Jeff McCall with a pass. That makes the score 24 to 18, and that's the way it ended.
18 Clemson seniors closed out their careers this year, and the past three seasons have been most rewarding for them. Three consecutive postseason bowl trips and 27 victories during that time. The most ever over a three-year period by a Clemson team. It will always remain special to them. They leave behind them a group of young players who have a great tradition to hold up. Of the first 44 players this past season, 23 were either freshmen or sophomores. And these players who are returning know that Clemson fans are going to be there whenever they play, regardless of where it might be. This past season, over 641,000 fans, an all-time Clemson record, saw the Tigers play. But this 1979 team is not going to be remembered for its eight victories or being the 10th bowl team of the Tigers. This group will be remembered for playing just a little bit better than it was capable of playing. Locking just a little bit harder, running just a little tougher, tackling with a little more authority, stretching a little more to catch a pass. The season was a team effort. Who scored the touchdowns, came up with the interceptions, threw the blocks, caught the passes, or made the tackles was of little consequence, just as long as he was wearing Clemson orange. Once a Tiger, always a Tiger, on the field or in the stands. It just gets in your blood when you step on the campus.